So I want to highlight for a few moments, I want to highlight um, some of the biggest reasons that I have seen that people get their hearts hurt within the church. This is not an exhaust, exhaustive list. Obviously, we're talking about millions of different stories and different situations. But I feel like I, I, over the years, I keep hearing the same thing being repeated in different churches across the world. And so I just want to highlight a couple of things. I just want to speak into some of it. So the first reason is judgment. This is judgment. This is where um, people come into the church and instead of encountering the love of the Father and the love of community and the love of people, they're encounter encountering judgment. And I just, you know, you see this all over social media and I just want to scream. I just, I want to scream and I don't understand why the body of Christ doesn't fully see this quite yet. And I, I just, man, if, if the scales could come off of our eyes um, in this area alone, I think the church, <laughs> the people would receive the church so much better. And, and when I, when I sat in my hospital bed and I realized, okay, I need a savior. And I was walking through those steps of, of receiving Jesus Christ. You know, I made a personal choice to surrender my life for him. And together, we've been walking this out for almost 25 years, 25 years now. But when I accepted Christ, I, I signed up for me. I, I signed up for myself, which means when I read the word of God, this gives me instructions and encouragement and hope for me that I can't take that word of God that gives me the outline for a lifestyle and I can't take that and throw that on somebody else and say, okay, let me back up. I believe the word of God is the truth. I believe that at the final hour, we are all going to be judged and, and we are going to be judged according to what it says in the word and that is the final authority. But I am the one that has come underneath that. The rest of the world has not. So when I take this book and I throw it over someone and I say, you're a little too messy, you're a little too dirty, you kind of stink a little bit, you're not quite ready to come on in, that's not the way it works. That's just, it's not the way it works when we judge people because they're not yet, um, they're not yet redeemed. They're not yet walking in the revelation that the sons and the daughters are. You, you do, you see this all over social media where people say, you know, um, you can't live like that. You can't say that. Or that's not how believers are. Yeah, you're right. That's how believers act. That's not for the world. And we're judging people as if we're standing at the at the the doors of the church, saying you're not ready yet. You're not pretty enough. You're not pretty yet on the inside. You're not. You're not. You haven't given up your lifestyle yet. You're a little too messy. Who appointed somebody to stand at the guard or stand at the door and be a guard of the of the church of Jesus? Nobody. Jesus has said, I died and I gave my life for all the smelly, dirty people that are walking in sin and filth and whatever. I gave my life for everyone. So why is the body of Christ? Are we not partnering with that? And I just, I feel like that's one of the biggest reasons why I hear that the body of Christ or that, that, that people have been hurt by the church, that there's been an expectation of them that they would have had the fruit of the power of God before they actually get a chance to, be, to meet the, the power of God. And so um, I want to share a real precious testimony with you in my own journey of being, becoming a daughter. And there was, um, I was called the black sheep of the family when I um, was growing up. And, um, you know, then I became a believer and I'm adopted and now I'm a, a daughter. But there's a journey of learning how to own that and walk in that. So it's already done, it's available, but I'm learning how to embrace that and, and the full revelation of that. And so I was doing this ministry and um, with somebody else, they were, they were doing it with me. And the whole thing about black sheep came back up. And there was this, this sense that I was operating from a position of a black sheep. And so as I was processing that with the Lord, I was like, okay, Lord, black sheep, is, it's not inner healing. It's not anything I have to cast out. It's simply just a mindset position that, that's inferior to what God has actually given me. And so, I, you know, come on, Jesus loves doing fun ministry. And so I'm tracking with him and I'm like, Jesus, how do you do that? So like if black sheep is like, it's not really who I am. It's kind of like I'm wearing like a costume of a black sheep. So how do you like take that off and just walk in, you know, your whiteness and the righteousness and whatever. It was kind of, I was just having fun with Jesus. And all of a sudden I saw Jesus come in this ministry time and he was, he was serious. And he came to me like an Australian farmer and he picked up that sheep with like, with all of his strength. And he took like these, these shears or these scissors and he started to take off all of the wool, the black wool on the sheep. 
And it was really involved. It really, it, it was just captivating my heart watching Jesus come and take off all the black, the, um, the black wool. And the moment that all the wool was off, the, the, um, the black, the sheep, which was me, was naked and was vulnerable. And the sheep, there wasn't like a, now would you like to go to the flock? The sheep, uh, me as the sheep, automatically went into the middle of the flock and was protected in the nakedness, in the, in the being bare and exposed. I was protected against all these bigger sheep that had thick matted fur on, I keep saying fur, but um, wool on them. And there was this sense of protection and there was this sense of being covered and, and having um, authority over me. And it was just so beautiful. And I asked the Lord after that, I said, Lord, I said, why did you need to shave me? Why, I, help me to understand what was the significance of being shaved? And he said, Lisa, because you needed time to grow your own wool. That yes, it's there, it's available, it's, you don't have to do anything, that it's just a natural occurrence. But he was saying, it's okay to be naked. It's okay to come into God's flock and to have less fur or, or wool. It's okay to be in a process and in a journey of growing that out and maturing. And I love that because there's no expectation that you need to be up here or that you need to start here. I don't care if you've been walking with the Lord for 50 years. There's still going to be more. There's still going to be a, a deeper revelation that you're not there yet. And I just, sometimes I think in the body of Christ, we've missed the fact that people are on journeys, that they are on journeys. All right. We just bless my technology here because it looks like it's kind of getting funny, but we bless it. Anyways, so the body of Christ, um, we don't want to be hurting people when they come into the door and they don't yet have the full revelation or the power or have experienced the power of God. All right. And I just, I just want to take the keys of heaven. I just want to take the keys of heaven that Jesus died for. And I just want to unlock anybody that has been told that you are not ready. You are not acceptable for the body of Christ. I just want to say, Jesus, Jesus has opened up the gates for you, that he has opened up the house wide for you. And there's no such thing as a gatekeeper in God's house. So we just unlock that part of your heart right now. And we just say, come on back, come on back that we need you in the body of Christ. 